Good. Good morning, modern steaders. We're going to be putting tin up in the outdoor kitchen for sheathing. You like the green look? That looks pretty pretty, right? That'll go good in there. Nice green tin roof. That'll look pretty, that green. gloves on. I don't want to cut myself up this morning. These gloves are nice. I'll put a link to them on Amazon. They got a rubber coating which so like you can't get cut but they actually give you a nice grip so if you're doing tin roof or anything wet you still get some good grip on it. I'm just kidding. We're doing galvanized. I think the galvanized will look nice in there. It's not 100% galvanized. It's a Galva Loom Plus. So from my understanding, it's got must have aluminum mixed in with it. It's supposed to last longer, and it's not as shiny. We didn't want a super shiny look. If we got a pure galvanized, it would have been very shiny. I ordered it to the lengths I need it. That way it's less cutting. We'll only have to rip, I think, three pieces twice. So we'll have to make six cuts, one cut for around the chimney, by doing it this way. We had to wait a week to get the tin, but it's going to be worth it. This is going to look nice. And of course, the first pieces we need are on the bottom. Pose the figure. That always happens. Now, when I put tin on, I like to pre-drill all the holes first. For the screws, I just find it a lot easier. Using my drywall T square, make a mark on one end, line it up. Awesome. Got the screws. All right, this is exciting. I ordered them a little short, and I'll explain that in a little bit. Nice. I like it. Now I need to take the stovepipe off, bring the next sheet over here, mark it, take it outside, cut it, install it, and the last piece we got to cut to width. Something you like to have to do is take stuff apart that you already built. But I knew we had to do it, so I didn't bolt anything together. What I can do is take this outside actually, get my measurements, trace this and go bigger. And this thimble, there's a lot of space, so you got this and then I don't know you got like three inches of room so if you cut your hole too big 
you get three inches of mess up space. The gimbal will go, the thimble will go over it and cover it up and that'll look nice against the tin. Don't like doing stuff like this. If you mess up, oh, man, it's not fun. So 17 and a half. the ribs. I'm just going to use my skill saw with a metal blade, but I think I'll go get my grinder. That'll make it easier. I don't think the mark shows up too well, but there's a really good green sharpie mark all the way around. I'm going to be using my angle grinder, and I got a metal cutoff wheel on it. This is an invaluable tool right here around the homestead. I'll have a link to one of these in the description down below through an Amazon affiliate link. I've used this for more things than I can count. I've had that since high school. It's just, you can sand with it, you can grind with it, you can cut stuff with it. It's invaluable. Having to cut around the ribs, especially on the side of one, that was a little tricky. It's not a beautiful cut, but we have plenty of room to hide it. Let's see if this fits. All right, the thimble fits in there. Now we just gotta hope we have it cut in the right spot. Now, if this fits on the first try, I'm gonna be pretty darn excited. I'm assuming I'm going to have to put it up there, make a few marks, take it back out, and trim it up. <laughs> awesome! Fingers crossed so far. I think we're good. install my thimble next, <clears throat> but I can't. I need to rip my piece to go in here because I'll either have just enough room for the thimble or I'm going to be short a little bit. So we'll get this cut, we'll get this piece of tin ripped and then installed. Uh, so. <laughs> This doesn't land on the rib. Oh, perfect, it doesn't. It was close. <laughs> Here goes nothing. Not a perfect cut. But not too bad for freehanding. Oh, let's see how it looks. Let's see if it fits first. Never mind how it looks. I'm curious to see how the thimble looks on there. I think the black and the galvanized is going to look awesome. I 
like it. How's that look? Cool beans. I was gonna light a fire, but I think let's get this wall tinned, and then we can start a fire. It's nice we don't have to use the wood stove as a shelf while we're working right near it. So we'll put up these three pieces, and then we can start a fire. How do you like it? It's good. You like it? Yeah. How do you like it? I like it. I gotta fix that little bit of white insulation right there. The reason why the tin's not touching the ground is because what I read is the concrete can make this coating corrode. So I left it up off the ground. We'll put a mop board of pine so that way we don't got to worry about our tin roofing corroding on us. I hate to get this for a coffee. It's like a 3D one. Yup. Yeah. 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 You shouldn't stand on that. Yeah. You're probably thinking you're noisy, that's why. What, because we're out here? Yeah. Probably. Hello. Hello. We're almost there. So the half that has the tin on it and without tin. Yeah, it's a lot nicer. my helper she had to go to the post office before they close we put these last few pieces up by myself up on the back wall. It's getting excited seeing it all come together. Let me show you what I learned. I've been putting the tin down like you would on a roof with the wider end on top to secure the piece behind it. 
And when you look at it from the side, it don't look so pretty, but it's not bad. It still looks awesome. But if you do it the opposite way, look at that. From the side and from the front, you cannot tell. Just a little nugget I picked up that I thought I'd pass along. We'll be doing that on this side now. Now it's time to go have some lunch. We're gonna go have homemade chicken and barley soup made with our pasture-raised chicken, homemade chicken broth, homemade peasant bread, rosemary and garlic. Mmm, it's gonna be delicious. Let's go. Yeah, that's just You want a piece of bread? You want a piece of bread, Mom? Yes, I do. Awesome. Mm. Lunch was good, and it looks like a war zone out here. Time to get back to work. Oh boy, that soup was delicious. I think it was one of the best chicken noodle soups or chicken flavored soups I've made. That was a good broth. Perfect time of the year for that. The broth, when you drank it or got it in your mouth, it made your lips nice and slippery. You could feel the fat and the oil the collagen, all the good stuff from the chicken that you want in a broth that's going to help your belly and help you get over a cold if you have one. Mm. Good. Alright, enough talking about food. Let's get back to work. tin to length other than you don't have to cut it is all the ends are coated with paint or galvanized whatever you whatever coating you have on them the ends are where if you cut them especially if they're outside it's bare metal and they're gonna rust. 
So if you have the opportunity to order your own tin, even Lowe's and Home Depot, and I'm sure Menards is the same way, they stock certain lengths, but they'll order yours to length. It saves you a lot of time and aggravation. Alright, last piece. Hopefully it fits. It should. Oh yeah, perfect. Nice, last screw. I wasn't gonna put the mark boards in today, but I decided while we have everything away from the walls, I can at least get the lower boards in. If I want to trim out the rest, I can do that later on. But the mop boards would be nice to have these done. I think that just finishes it off. A lot nicer. Gives it a finish and touch. Alright, let's get this board up. That's all we're going to have time for today. I'm going to end the video here. we got a few things we got to go do and take care of. I was hoping to get it all finished and wrapped up today, but I'll have to finish it up, bring you guys along and show you. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. I'd love to hear it. What do you think of the galvanized tin in the outdoor kitchen? Leave it in the comments down below. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Share it with all your friends. It really helps the channel grow. And don't forget, when we hit 20,000 subscribers, we're going to be giving away an automatic chicken plucker. I'll see you right back here tomorrow at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Bye.